Hello, my dear class eight students. My name is Ben Tungo, and I'll be your new science teacher. And today uh, we will start with our chapter four, that is materials, met metals, and non-metals. Clear? Metals and non-metals. So dear students, can you differentiate between metals and non-metals? You can randomly say that this is metal, this is not a metal, right? But there is a proper way, okay? There is a science way to differentiate metals and non-metals, clear? So the first thing is physical property, okay? Through physical property, we can differentiate metals and non-metals. Physical property, clear? Physical property. Now, what is physical property? Physical property means just by looking at something and understanding it, okay? You understand it and then you make an observation, right? So that's a physical property, right? You just look at a tree outside and then you say that, oh, this is a tree, right? That's how like a physical property is, clear? So now under physical property, first let's study about uh, appearance, clear, appearance. Appearance. Clear. Now, students, uh, I'll give you two, two objects, okay? One is iron, clear? One is iron and the other is coal, okay, coal. Iron and uh, coal. Now, just by looking at uh, the iron, we can see that iron, it is shiny, right? It is shiny. So iron, uh, true just by its appearance, we can say that iron is lustrous, clear? Lustrous means that are shiny in surface, clear? And now coal, will it shine? No, right, coal will not shine. So from here, true appearance, we can make conclusion that uh, metals are lustrous and coal, it is, that is a non-metal, right? It's non-metals are uh, non-lustrous, clear? Okay, so now the second thing we'll learn is under the physical property, let's study about uh, hard, hardness, okay? Hardness. Now, let's take the same example, iron, and let's take coal, clear? Now, iron, will you be able to break? I mean, if you take another, if you take a an hammer and if you just beat, you will not be able to break this iron, right? But what about the coal? You can just stem it, right? Or if you just take the ham hammer, it will break easily, clear? So from here, we can conclude that metals are hard, whereas non-metals are not very hard, or we can say they are brittle. Okay, brittle means Chocolate, right? You can just break it, yeah. Okay, so now the third property would be sound, okay? Sound, or we can say it is sonorous, okay? Sonorous. So what is this sonorous? Metals, you know, metals, they have a ringing sound. Clear? Have you uh, observed like a church bell, a school bell, right? It is made of this like metal, right? And then you'll have another metal inside, right? And if you strike these two metal, then you'll get a ringing sound, right? So that's an example of sonorous. Do you expect the same sound with the wood? No, right? With the wood, the sound will be different. And the other example we can bring uh, here is, let's say in exam time, okay? During, uh, in a classroom and then during examination, Say suppose uh, you have a uh, two rupees or five rupees coin, and if suppose if you drop it, then the sound will be different, right? And, and just compare it with the sound of if you drop your question paper, okay? If you suppose you drop your question paper, you observe the sound, clear? And suppose you drop any coin, okay? Any coin, then the sound will be different, clear? So from here, we can conclude that metals are sonorous, clear? Now, the fourth property is very important, and that is going to be uh, malleability. Clear? Malleability.
Okay, students, now our fourth property under a physical property would be uh, malleability. So what is this malleability? Me malleability is a property of a metal where we can beat it into a thin sheets. Okay, thin sheets. Like, have you seen aluminum foil? Right, aluminum foil, it's very flat, right? So now it has been beaten, okay? It has been beaten into a thin sheet. But we cannot expect this coal to become like, uh, uh, to behave like an uh, aluminum foil, right? Because it will just break. Or we cannot expect the wood to behave like a coal, or to behave like the aluminum foil, right? Or we can also take an example, you can take an iron nail, okay? An iron nail also, if you just uh, beat it with uh, a hammer, okay? Or if you just beat it, then what you'll observe? You'll observe that it will become flat. Clear? So now, the property of a metal, I'm repeating. If I'm repeating something, that is important, okay? Now, uh, the property of a metal where uh, it can be beaten into a thin sheets, okay? I'll write here, thin sheets. It is known as malleability. So now from here we'll conclude that metals are malleable. Clear? And non-metals are non-malleable. Clear? Okay. Now the next property would be ductility. Okay. Ductility. Now this ductility is also very important. Now it is a property of a metal where it can be beaten into a or it can be drawn into a wire, okay? Wire. Clear. Now you have seen uh, ornaments, jewelries, right? Uh, those are, those will come under this uh, ductility. Clear? Because those are metals, right? And metal has this property that where they can be uh, drawn into a wire. And how is this possible? First, they have to melt. And then after uh, melting is done, uh, they'll be drawn into a wire. And that's where you get this uh, copper wire. Have you seen a wire? That wire is made of copper and copper is a metal. Clear? Now we have also uh, all these like gold, jewelries, like go gold, silver, right? All these are metals. So now they will fall under this category. Clear? Now the next property would be Heat. Clear? Heat. I'm sure you are familiar with this word heat, right? Now, uh, metals are good conductors of heat, okay? Whereas non-metals are bad conductor of heat, okay? So, uh, let's use a common example. Now, let's say this is a fire, okay? Just say this is a fire, uh, fire, and these are the firewood, okay? This is a firewood, firewood. And then we have a frying pan, okay, frying pan, let's say this is all made of metal, okay, this is a frying pan, okay, this is a frying pan, and, and just you assume that all this is a metal, clear, all this is a metal, now what will happen, you will not be able to touch even this, the uh, outer surface here, because it will be, uh, because the heat will, heat transfer will take place even till here, right, but uh, whereas you can touch this, uh, you can make some adjustment here with the wood. The upper part you can't touch, right? But here, the, the other side we can touch. Clear? So from here, what we can conclude is that non-metals are bad conductor of heat. Because, he, because here, the transfer of heat is not taking place. Right? But whereas, let's say this is a, a frying pan, okay? A metal frying pan, a metal frying pan. Here, you will not be able to touch all the surface because the transfer of heat is taking place. Clear? Okay, so now the last property under uh, the physical property would be electricity. Now, students, under electricity, uh, it's same like the heat, okay? Metals are good conductors of uh, electricity, whereas non-metals are bad conductor of electricity. And I'll give you a very common example. Have you ever seen uh, an electrician holding a screwdriver? 
right? Now the screwdriver, the electrician holds the screwdriver on the other side, that is the non-metal side, right? Have you observed that? And then the metal part is used for checking the uh, connection. If there's some problem or if there's some problem with the switchboard, the electrician will touch the metal part with that, right? We'll check with the metal part. But he will not hold the metal part, right? He will hold the non-metal part. Why? From here, we can simply, we can conclude that metals are good conductors of electricity, whereas non-metals are bad conductors of electricity. Clear? So students, make a note of all these points. We are done with the physical property. And before we uh, go to our next topic, that is chemical property, we will study exception. Okay, these exceptions are very important. Okay, so students, now we'll study about exception. Okay, now under this exception, let us study. Uh, now, you have to get familiar with this name, okay? Sodium and potassium, okay? Sodium and potassium. So studium, students, sodium and potassium are metals. Okay, these are metals. But before I told you that all the metals are hard, right? But these two metals are soft. Clear? These two metals are soft. And then uh, not only soft, but they are very dangerous, very harmful. Clear? So uh, this type of exception you have to remember because generally we are classifying metals are hard and non-metals are soft or not very hard. But this sodium and potassium are metals that are soft, but they are also very dangerous. They are very soft that we can just cut them with a knife, you know, like a cake. Cake, we can just cut with a knife, right? So the same as sodium also we, and potassium also we can cut with a knife. Clear? Now let's study about this mercury. Now, mercury is a metal. But now here the exception is mercury is the only metal that you'll find at a liquid state. Okay, at room temperature. Okay, so far we know that like metals are solid, right? Solid. And uh, non-metals, they may be, uh, they may be like uh, in a gaseous form, right? But now, uh, or in a liquid form, right? But here, mercury, though it is a metal, you will find in a liquid state at room temperature. Okay, room temperature. Clear? Okay, so student, we are done with the uh, exception part. Now, uh, next, we will study about the chemical properties. Clear? Students, next this is chemical property, okay? And we just need two classification, physical class, uh, property and then chemical property. This is how we will uh, differentiate, distinguish between metals and non-metals, okay? So I'm sure you are very clear with the physical property. And now this is the second part of the chapter, clear? This chapter, we are, we, uh, it's just into two parts. That is physical, physical properties and then chemical properties, clear? So now, under chemical properties, we will study about the reactions, okay? So now the first is reaction with water. With water. Clear. Now, students, metals, uh, they react with water. Clear. But non-metals, they do not react with water. Keep this in mind. Metals, they react with uh, water, but non-metals, they do not react with water. Clear? Okay, now uh, in the second, so the second one we'll study about reaction with oxygen. Okay, so students, now, oxygen means air, right? Now, 
for this, before we start, I'll give you an example. Have you seen uh, in a garage, okay, in any garage, have you seen an old car, if it's left, a uh, place like left for uh, maybe two, three years, what will happen to the car condition? It will turn into a reddish, brownish, that means already rusting has taken place, right? So this is the result, reaction with oxygen. That means metal is reacting with the air, okay? Air around. And then uh, iron, rusting. Uh, take place because metal react with oxygen, air, and then water. Clear? Okay, so for this, I'll give one example. The, this example is given in your textbook, okay? Magnesium, magnesium. So this is a met metal, okay? Magnesium is a metal, and then I have oxygen. Clear? Oxygen. Now, from here, you have to remember that this is metal, clear? Then this is air or oxygen. Now, what you will get the result? You have to remember this one, you will get metallic oxide. Okay, see, very simple, metal oxide, clear? Metal oxide, clear? So metal and oxygen, we're getting metal oxide, right? So then that means we're taking example metal, we're taking an example of magnesium, clear? Now oxygen is, uh, we all know, okay, now I'll give the formula here. Okay, so now the result we'll get is magnesium oxide, right? Magnesium oxide. So the result we'll get is magnesium oxide. Clear? Now, magnesium, oxygen, magnesium oxide, clear? So in general, you have to just remember that whenever metals react with oxygen, you'll get metallic oxide, clear? So now the answer for this one would be, let's see, magnesium oxide, clear? Now, students, uh, in the next class, we'll, we are going to start with a reaction of non-metals reacting with oxygen, okay? And that is also going to be very interesting, clear? Non-metals reacting with oxygen. And today, I would uh, leave you with one important uh, topic that is... Uh, okay, so these two, over here we can see this is a litmus paper, clear? This is an... Litmus pepper. Clear. And then the, the first one, let's say it is blue color, okay? Blue color. Clear. And the second one, let's say it is red color. Clear. Litmus pepper, and it, uh, the first one is blue litmus, okay? We'll put it this way. And the second one is red litmus. Clear. Now, if blue changes to red, we'll say that it is acid, okay? Clear? If blue changes to red, we'll, we'll, we'll call it as acid. And if red changes to blue, we'll say it is a base. Clear? So keep this in mind, I'm just giving you as a homework, okay? So uh, in the next class, we'll, I'll start with this uh, litmus paper, a color differentiation, and we'll begin with non-metals react, uh, reacting with oxygen, okay? So please keep this in mind, blue changing to red is acid, red changing to blue is base, clear? So thank you so much, see you in the next class.